All right, good afternoon. Over the past year and a half, more than 600,000 people received unemployment insurance benefits at some point in time during the pandemic. Now, come September 4th, all pandemic-related temporary federal programs will be ending. These programs include Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, or PUA, Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation, or PEUC, Federal Pandemic Unemployment Compensation, or FPUC, and Mixed Earner Unemployment Compensation, or MEUC. In today's webinar, we're going to talk about deferred claims, what that means, and what those with a deferred claim can expect after September 4th. Joining me today is Brian, who will talk about this transition and answer your questions. If any of you would like to have this webinar simultaneously interpreted, please follow the instructions on the slide. It is being interpreted in Spanish, Russian, Vietnamese, and Cantonese. To use the interpretation tool, click the interpretation box in the bottom Zoom bar and then choose your preferred language. And then the presenter's voice will be lowered while the interpreter speaks over it. You can choose to mute the presenter if you want. And we're gonna give everybody a second um, to read this slide in their language. And then we have another slide in uh, the two other languages. And we'll give everybody a moment to use that tool. <clears throat> All right. Please remember that we cannot look into or resolve one person's own claim status in this public forum, and it is not safe to put your personal information in the chat or question boxes in this public recorded webinar that will be posted online. Please post your questions in the Q&A box, not the chat box, in the Zoom meeting and we'll take as many of them as we can after we finish the discussion with Brian. The Q&A box is located in the middle of the bottom bar of the Zoom window. If you have questions regarding federal benefit programs, we ask that you please use the contact us form to ask your questions rather than calling. We're asking you to do this so that we can keep our phone lines open to those needing help resolving issues with their claim. Now let's get started with Brian, our unemployment insurance expert. So Brian, first off, can you please remind us what PEUC stands for and what and when those benefits end? Sure, um, PEUC stands for Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation. Uh, it is one of the federal programs that were rolled out during the COVID-19 pandemic. It is often called an extension program because it gave you an extra benefits after you exhausted your regular UI claim. Because these benefits are temporary and from the federal government, Oregon has no control over when they end. All federal programs are ending September 4th, 2021, including PEUC. Mixed Earn Unemployment Compensation, or MEUC, uh, which is the extra $100 a week benefit uh, program for people earning both W-2 wages and self-employment income. Uh, pandemic Unemployment Assistance, or PUA, um, for those who are self-employed and Federal Pandemic Unemployment Compensation, that's FPUC, uh, which gave um, claimants the extra $300 per week. Don't forget to claim the week ending September 4th, since that is the last eligible week. That means you must claim that week uh, during the week of September 5th through the 10th in order to receive those benefits. If you have a valid U regular UI claim, you will not be cut off from all of your benefits just the extra federal monies. Your regular UI benefits will continue as long as you have benefits remaining on your regular UI claim in Oregon. Thank you for that clarification, Brian. So can you tell us, can you first tell us what a deferred claim is and then tell us what is happening to those claims when the federal benefits end? Yes, yeah, so back in March or April, a lot of claims expired as they were at the one year mark. As you may remember, when your claim expires, you were required to file a new claim to see if you were eligible for regular UI benefits again. There were a group of people that were not eligible for a new claim, so we put them back on the PEUC extension to continue receiving benefits. 
And then there was a group of people who were eligible for a new claim. However, since their new weekly benefit amount was drastically lower, they were also put on the PEUC extension and their regular UI claim was deferred. Or another way to think about it is that the regular UI claim was put on hold. With PEUC ending on September 4th, those who had a deferred claim can go back on that regular UI claim. Uh, you will start receiving benefits on this regular claim after serving a waiting week or the week of September 5th uh, before you will start receiving benefits from that claim. Keep in mind that your weekly benefit amount will change and you will no longer receive the $300 FPUC payment. So can you clarify what is a waiting week? Typically every new claim has to wait one week before we can pay out benefits. The waiting week was waived during the pandemic, but now since federal programs are ending and so is the governor's state of emergency, Oregon law requires that we reinstate it. Therefore, all new claims will have to wait one week before you start to receive benefits. Keep in mind that the waiting week does not affect the total amount of benefits you will receive and that you are still required to claim the week and complete your work seeking activities for that week. Thanks, Brian. So what can you tell us about work seeking activities that are required for those with deferred claims? Another thing that was waived during the pandemic was the requirement to be able, available, and actively seeking work. Basically, that means you have to be able and be able and available to take a job, and you must look for work while you're receiving unemployment insurance benefits. This requirement is being reinstated. So if you were on a deferred regular UI claim that is active again, you will have to report five work seeking activities to us each week that you claim benefits. Two of the five work seeking activities each week must be direct employer contacts. This means contact them in person, by phone, by mail, or online to ask about or apply for work. Work seeking activities include making direct contact with an employer, going to a hiring events or workshops, networking, updating your resume, looking at job placement websites or newspapers without actually applying for a job. Do you have to report work, see work seeking activities during the waiting week? Yes, you must claim your waiting week and submit your work seeking activities for that week as well. Then you should begin receiving benefits the following week. So what happens if someone doesn't claim their waiting week? So if someone doesn't claim the waiting week, we will assume that they return to work and their benefits will stop. They would need to reopen or restart their claim and still serve the waiting week, which often leads to people missing out on benefits. Remember, the waiting week doesn't mean stop claiming. It's more of a pause on our part before we start to pay out benefits in order for us to process your claim and to prevent fraudulent claims from getting through. So what if I'm working um, part-time? Can I keep filing or do I need to file a new claim? It depends. Um, if, you are, if you are on PEUC and your claim's expired, you will need to file a new claim. If you are on a deferred claim, then you would start that claim the week of September 5th and continue to claim each week. Keep in mind that you will still need to be able, available, and actively seeking work, and you will still need to complete your work seeking activities to receive benefits. So where can people go for help in returning to work or finding other resources? Anyone looking for assistance in their work search effort, effort should visit the local work source office. Uh, these centers can provide you with job search assistance, employer matching, resume building, special programs, veterans services, and more. On top of that, these centers can also help you apply for SNAP, housing and rent assistance, and guide you to other public programs that can help you. You can also find other resources uh, that are available to you at unemployment.oregon.gov slash resources that lead out to uh, other public programs with different agencies. Here are the WorkSource Oregon numbers, so you have a chance to write them down. We encourage you to call to make your appointment. However, centers will also accept walk-ins, take virtual appointments, and give over-the-phone assistance. And now I'll pause for a moment so you can write down your local center's number, but you can also find this information on WorksourceOregon.org.
All right, our next webinar is September 16th at 1 p.m. and we will talk about PUA backdating of initial and weekly claims and some updates to the temporary availability rules for those on regular UI. As a reminder, you can register for future webinars at unemployment.oregon.gov slash webinars. You can also sign up for our email updates at unemployment.oregon.gov. Now with our remaining time, we are going to go into the Q&A box to answer some of your questions. Please remember that this is a public forum, so do not put any confidential information into the Q&A box. Um, Thank you for joining us and I will stop sharing my screen and go into the Q&A box. So the first question comes from Charles. Uh, how do I determine which program my UI benefits are currently coming from and how do I determine if I have a deferred claim? That's actually a really good question. Um, there's a couple of indicators that you might see on uh, the documents that we mail you or um, in the online claim system. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what, uh, what you'll see when you log into the, um, the, the online claim system as far as uh, payment programs. Um, but one of, one of the indicators is if your benefit year ending has expired, is in the past and you're still receiving benefits, then you are most likely on a uh, PEUC claim. Um, if you have questions about whether or not what which which program you're in, which benefits you're receiving, the best thing to do would be use the contact us form. Um, we can't tell. I couldn't tell you whether or not you have a deferred claim or if there's another claim available for you uh, without knowing the specifics. So the best thing to do if you have questions about it would be to use the contact us and just ask, and then they should be able to answer that question relatively quickly. Uh, the next question comes from Carrie. Um, it sounds like she might have gotten a uh, person who wasn't quite sure what she was meaning. So uh, I sent a question to the contact us forum about the possibility of me starting a new claim on the uh, 9-5-21 or September 5th. Um, she's a, uh, they're not sure if they're eligible because uh, they don't know if they have a deferred claim or not uh, and not sure how to find this out, uh, which is why they sent in the question. And the response mm -hmm. back was that they were un that I am unaware of any programs or extensions past September fourth, twenty twenty one. So now Carrie's super confused. I would um, be too. That's a very yeah. that's, that's <laughs> very unfortunate. That doesn't answer the question at all. Uh, you can ask. You can always use the contact us form to, to ask. Unfortunately, I think this individual probably misunderstood the question um, and what she was trying to find out, but you actually don't need permission to file a new claim. You can always file a new claim at any time and the system will tell you whether or not you're allowed to file it. And then when we process it, we'll let you know if there's any benefits available to you. So I, I still encourage you to use the contact us and hopefully you'll get a little bit better feedback than you, than in this case. Um, and, uh, I'm going to just make a note of this one that way I can follow up. Um, because that's just, that doesn't answer the question that she asked. And I, and I do, that would be very super confusing. Um, but you can always log into the OCS uh, as soon as Sunday, um, which is this beginning of the new week. I would I always recommend people claim their last week, uh, the last week of the of benefits, the week ending the fourth. And then the day after you file for that week, you can try and file a new initial claim. And the system will tell you whether or not you can do it. And then if you do file it and, and it allows you to actually file it because your old claim hasn't expired yet or your old claim has expired, uh, then we'll let you know whether you'd be eligible for benefits on that claim. Um, so there's two options. You can always ask, but when the answer isn't clear or confusing in this case, you can still go in and try and file a claim. There's no penalty for doing that. The system is open. You can you can log into it and, uh, and and just file it and see what happens. Thank you. Um, does attending OED webinars count as a job seeking activity? Uh, we did. No. <laughs> yeah, we did have one webinar count, um, and that was a special exception because it was the beginning of. Uh, the transition back to work seeking activities, but beyond that, we, uh, we and correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, but beyond that one, uh, we don't allow uh, the, these, these webinars specifically to count as uh, job seeking activities. That's correct. Um, they did allow the first one. I really had to lobby and petition 
for that credit um, that but uh, there, there's not credit for any subsequent webinars. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Jacob would like to know if I if on a deferred claim, do I need to start a new claim beginning the week of September 5th or do I just continue claiming per usual? If you have a deferred claim, meaning that you already have a valid new regular UI claim, but we moved you away from it, you would just continue claiming. You're just going to keep claiming each week. And we'll, we will have the system, um, either through an automated or manual process, make sure that that week gets credited on the right claim, and, and you can just keep going seamlessly. Mm -hmm. And once again, keep in mind that when you go to claim the week of September 5th, so that wouldn't be, you know, you wouldn't claim September 5th next week, you would be claiming September 4th. But um, so when you go to claim that week, that'll be your waiting week. So that's where that pause happens. Um, so you won't receive benefits the week of the 12th or benefit payment, I should say, the week of the 12th. Is that, I'm looking at a calendar. Uh, I have one here. That's so, the the fifth through the eleventh is the waiting week. Correct. That would be the waiting week. If somebody was on a deferred claim and we moved them back to the regular UI claim, <coughs> uh, the fifth through the eleventh would be the waiting week if they claimed it and uh, were otherwise eligible to receive benefits for the week. We just don't pay it. Mm -hmm. All right. The next question is, um, so are those on deferred claims uh, possibly eligible for the Oregon SEA program since PEUC is not a, uh, uh, or sorry, since on PEUC this program was unavailable? Yeah, so the deferred claim is just a regular Oregon UI claim that was available before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and after the pandemic. It's just a straight Oregon claim, which generally the self-employment assistance program is compatible with regular Oregon claims. I, I would always reach out to the self-employment assistance um, and ask them directly because that's a special program. All right. Um, so Shalanda would like to know, so can you still claim uh, for September 5th through the 10th is the last, sorry, it's kind of an oddly phrased question. So it, it sounds like you can, can you still claim through the September 5th through the 10th uh, for the last of the pandemic funds? Yeah, so you would file a claim for the week of uh, August 29th through the 4th. That's the last week that we can pay benefits for, but you'll actually claim that week. So we're always one week in arrears. You'll, make, you'll take the action of claiming that week during the week of the 5th through the 11th. So during the week of the 5th through the 11th, if you claim the prior week, the 29th through the 4th, you would get paid for, you, you would get paid for that week. Okay, thank you. Um, Desiree wants to ask, I received an email from OED saying that I have a deferred claim. Do I need to do anything to initiate going to that claim or will it happen automatically? Yeah, it's gonna be set up to either to do as automated as possible, just continue doing your weekly claims. Okay. Um, Magdalena would like to know, my regular UI claim went to zero in July, then I was put on PEUC. Will I still keep claiming? My claim will end in December of 2021. So I, can you go into exhausted first, is it expired first before you answer this? Yeah, so there's two situations. Um, when a claim has expired, it means that the benefit year has ended. And you are allowed to file one claim per year. And that's what that means. So every year that you can file one, one unemployment insurance claim. Now, within that calendar year, there is a certain amount of benefits that are available. And when those benefits run out, uh, it's generally six months worth of benefits, sometimes less, depending upon each person's earnings and situation. Um, but when those benefits run out, you have exhausted the benefits that are available to you, right? So if someone has exhausted their benefits, their regular UI benefits, there's nothing left um, from regular UI, and their claim has not expired, meaning that year is not up, um, they would not be able to file a new claim. Uh, and there probably most likely isn't any benefits that are going to be available for that person. 
um, if somebody uh, is on a PEUC EUC claim and their prior claim has expired, they can always file a new claim and basically resetting that year. Uh, filing the claim is just an application. You are asking the employment department, is there any benefits available to me, for me? Um, you can file the claim and then it's, we'll have to determine based upon the law whether or not there's any additional benefits for you. Some people will have additional benefits for them, especially if they have had at least some intermittent work um, since the pandemic began. If someone has not worked at all since the pandemic began, there's probably not any wages or wage credits to establish the claim and provide any benefits. Thank you, Brian. All right, so the next question, um, it goes into, I think it was HB 3178. I might have the wrong number. HB 3178 um, still in effect until I believe the first week of January. Yeah, so, so if my- no, Nothing is changing there. Okay, so if my deferred claim is significantly lower, I would still qualify for the full amount as long as I made less than $300 in my uh, part-time job, correct? Is the $300 income maximum to still collect claims going to be a permanent change to OED rules? Yeah. So I'd have to look up at the memo again just to make sure I had it right for the first question. Um, but for the second question, I can answer no. It is, it is a, temporary, uh, a temporary law. It is set to expire um, in January. And just to clarify, that's not an OED rule that is uh, legislation that's organized. Correct. Yeah, HB 3178 is a, a bill from the legislature. They passed a law that basically says from this day to this day, this is how, this is this is the definition of being unemployed is, is what the technical version of it is. The practical application is we have a, we, we, we are allowed to pay more benefits out to Oregonians, but it is temporary. And I'm going to put in the chat box where you can find more information on that. All right. So after the 10th, do you have to start a new claim? And they don't necessarily have to wait to the 10th, correct? Correct, yeah, so benefits stop um, the week ending the fourth. You have from the fifth until the 11th to claim benefits for that week. Um, some individuals will need to start a new claim or file a new claim and some individuals will already have one from, from it being deferred. So every situation, everyone's situation is gonna be a little bit different there. If you have questions about what you should do I would use the contact us form and hopefully they'll be able to provide you with the correct um, guidance there. All right. Um, if you had to file a new claim at the end of March, which moved you from regular UI to sorry, at the end of March, which moved you from regular I to PUC, does that count as a new claim filing for the year? Um, this depends. So if in March your claim expired and you had to file a new UI claim, um, there's the two different scenarios, right? In one scenario, the person may have worked and earned new wages during that last year at that point, and they would have qualified for a new regular UI claim. Right, but the weekly benefit amount was lower than what they could get from PUC. That's called a deferred claim. We deferred that new claim. That individual would not have to file a new claim. Um, some individuals, uh, they have exhausted their benefits, but the year hasn't, ex hasn't turned over yet. Like that year hasn't passed. So in that case, uh, they, would, they would not file a new claim and they wouldn't be able to, but some have had that, that year expire and can file a new claim. It doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna be eligible for benefits. It just means that they have the opportunity or they can file a new claim um, to, for us to, to see if they are eligible. All right, so let's see. Um, so this person, they've done some part-time work over the past few months. 
um, but they haven't been paid for it yet. Do they still claim it for those weeks that they did the work? So do, I guess the question is, do they claim those earnings for the week that they did the work or until they get paid? Um, for unemployment insurance, you report earnings when they're earned. Every employer has a different pay schedule. Some pay weekly, some pay biweekly, some pay monthly. Um, we're not concerned with when earnings are paid. We're concerned with when you earn them. So you're going to report them as you earn them. All right. It looks like that is the end of our questions. I will give it to you. That's it. All right. Well, thank you, Brian, for your time. And thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate you uh, coming to learn more about it, uh, about deferred claims and, you know, what to expect after as we make this transition. Um, this webinar was recorded and it will be posted on uh, unemployment.oregon.gov slash webinars and will also be on our uh, YouTube channel as well. Uh, once again, thank you, Brian, and thank you, everyone, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.